I'd like to bring on the first storyteller. Her name is Melanie Tate. Melanie is a producer and an announcer, a broadcaster with the ABC. She also runs her own storytelling slam called Now Hear This. She's a fabulous storyteller. Please make her welcome to the stage, Melanie Tate. When most 16-year-olds were learning how to give hand jobs and get, getting drunk on rocket fuel, I was at home in my bedroom listening to Barbara Streisand, Bette Midler, Bernadette Peters and a whole host of ladies of song singing devastating songs. But the one I listened to the most and who I adored the most wasn't a real-life lady. It was a character from a musical called... Eponine, and Eponine was in Les Mis. I'm not sure if you've seen Les Mis, but Eponine is this character who was kind of scrappy. Um, in my head, because I'd never seen Les Mis, she was really chubby, and she <laughs> used to run around the streets in love with this boy called Marius, singing this song called On My Own, and the song was the story of my life. It was like on my own, pretending he's beside me, all alone I walk with him till moonlight. Was so romantic and sad. So I used to think that I was Eponine and I lived and breathed that musical Les Mis. And in fact, I warrant that if anybody else is a fancy lover of Les Mis here now, if you were to name a line from Les Mis, I could pick it up and take you right through to the end of the show. <laughs> no worries. If you want to, please like test me <laughs> because that's absolutely true. So I was just obsessed with Les Mis and every night I would go home and play the song on my own on the piano at least three times and then sing the rest of it. And it was just my absolute dream and obsession to be a humongous musical theatre star, like beyond famous, like Elaine Page or someone like that, who I guess you only know if you're really into musical theatre <laughs> because she's one of those, you know, famous to musical theatre people who are like usually, no offence, but like fat girls and gay men. <laughs> so... <laughs> um, <laughs> I was obsessed with Les Mis and in this little country town, nobody else was obsessed with Les Mis, but I thought that all my Christmases had come at once one day when I opened Spectrum in the Sydney Morning Herald because that was what I read instead of, you know, spy thrillers like normal kids read. And uh, there on the page one day was Les Mis Open Auditions. And I was 16 at the time doing my HSC and because I spent all my time singing Les Mis, I didn't spend much time studying. So I thought this is a great exit plan outside <laughs> of uni and stuff like that because I would just be cast as Eponine and then I could go on and be a musical theatre star. So they said on this little ad, you must send your biog and a photo. And so I sent my photo, which was a picture of me at my 16th birthday party. <laughs> and I sent my biog, which consisted of really exciting and amazing productions like Sybil in Faulty Towers at the Oxley College house play and um, all sorts of, you know, crappy little things like that. And I sent it in and not surprisingly, I didn't hear anything. And I was kind of devastated by this, but... My dad, who has always been my greatest champion in the world, said, well, you, do you think Barbara Streisand would just be ignored for an audition? No, Barbara Streisand would go and get that audition. So I took a day off school and went into Sydney, which was two hours away from where we were, with my little 16-year-old picture and my biog and my demo tape. My demo tape included me singing on my own, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, you must love me and I know him so well with me singing with me because it's a duet. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I went in there to... This is, I, I went into Cameron Mackintosh, which at the time was 66 Hunter Street, a beautiful big gothic... It's still there, a beautiful big gothic building. And I went in and asked to speak to whoever was casting Les Mis and they kind of looked at me strangely because I was in a school uniform and um, said, OK, okay look, just... Just wait over there. So I went and <laughs> waited and the casting director came out. I was so nervous and I said, look, I really, you know, feel that I could be Eponine. Uh, it's, oh, it's so embarrassing just him recalling this. Like, I've just, I'm feeling so embarrassed. Could I have an audition? And she said, look, I'll see what I can do. Give me your stuff. Went away. And then a few days later, she called me up and said, we'd love you to audition for Les Mis. And you would, like, it was the most exciting thing to happen to our school, you know, like everybody, I told everybody that I was having a day off school to go and audition for Les Mis. And at the time, the auditions were at the back of Her Majesty's Theatre. There was like a big um, a studio there with a piano and mirrors and stuff like that. Went down in my school uniform and I'd prepared 
Madonna's song, You Must Love Me, which was an add-on to... Uh, it's just like the worst song to prepare. And went in and all my heroes of musical theatre were like waiting for their chance to audition, sitting along. And they were all mates and they were all like laughing and skinny and fab and, you know, <laughs> like just really great mates. And all I wanted was just to be part of that because as well as the dream of being Eponine, my dream was also to fall in love with whoever played Marius... <laughs> and go on and be like musical theatre stars in Mac and Mabel and all sorts of different shows. So I was pretty certain that my future husband was in that line of awesome people being fab. And I went in and did my audition and you could tell like they just felt sorry for me because I was like this little chubby pimple-faced girl. And I, I remember it as being in my school uniform, but actually I don't think I would have been in my school uniform, but let's just say for this story I was in my school uniform as well. Went in and sang You Must Love Me and it was terrible, like, absolutely terrible. And they said, thanks very much. Off I went. My dad was waiting for me outside. And I said, oh, I think I buggered it up. And I was thinking, oh, I've got to go back to school and tell everybody I'm not going to be up in here. And my dad said, do you think Barbara Streisand would walk away <laughs> from a bad audition? <laughs> no, Barbara Streisand would go back in and she would sing the song again. And I said, well, OK, I'll go back in. I went back in and said, I was, oh, it's just so embarrassing. Went back in and said, excuse me, but I was wondering if I could sing for you again because I was very nervous and I don't think I sang for you as well because think about this. You know when you're nervous, the first thing that happens is this. <sighs> you know, you can't breathe properly. And the thing you need more than anything in the world as a singer is to be able to breathe properly. So I said, please, can I go in? And they said, well, what would you like to sing? And I said, I'll sing on my own, thank you. from <laughs> Play me as oh. And so I sang it. And I don't know if... Does anyone know the song on my own? It actually... St- <laughs> well, let me just tell you there's a little bit in it. Where, um, it's a... It's a note where it says, um, and I know that he is blind, still I say there's a way for us, right? And the blind is just a perfect B, and it's a really beautiful note to sing if you've got a fabulous voice. And back then I had a semi-fabulous voice, I don't now, but it was, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful note to sing. And when I got to that note, because I was so nervous, I just botched it, and I knew then that I was never going to be Eponine. Very sad. Went out. I know Barbara didn't, but Dad said to me, look, I'm sure Barbara had a few like trips and falls as well, so don't worry. Off we went back to Robertson and I had to tell everybody I didn't get the part and it was pretty depressing. But I must tell you who pipped me at the post for this part. Um, <laughs> it was Natalie Mendoza got the part. Now, I'm not sure that you know Natalie Mendoza, but she is... We're not very similar. Like, if, you <laughs> if you've seen her, she's like this tiny, gorgeous woman, long black hair. Incre- like, and at the time, it was really fashionable. All the Eponines around... The world were cast to be Lee, like Lisa Longa, who was an Asian girl, and so they all of the like I wasn't Asian either, as you might have noticed. So that didn't help either. But Natalie Mendoza was like this gorgeous, gorgeous woman, and she went on to get this, be engaged to Marius, who was played by David <laughs> Campbell. That's right, and to have a bit of a Hollywood career where she went on to be in you know South Pacific and stuff, and was engaged at one stage to Joseph Fiennes as well. And I think you know. Les Mis could have given me David Campbell, who was playing Marius at the time, or Joseph Fiennes, and a, and a big career. But instead, luckily, I'm here telling this story to you guys, and I'd rather be doing that. So thank you very much.